You know, I didn't, uh, I'm not a teacher, I'm kind of a teacher by default. I worked uh, 13 years in an aircraft company, and I didn't start to teach till I was 40 years old. I was kind of scared of it. Anyway, I, in this aircraft company I worked in, there were 62,000 employees, and none of them cared if I wrote poems or not. I mean, that is to say, it was a matter of complete indifference to 62,000 people. Now, uh, when, when I went to work, I started at the University of Montana, I thought, well, you know, uh, this is an English department, and people here are going to like me because, because I write poems. I mean, I was very naive. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so I went to work in this English department at the age of 40, and there were 26 employees there, just 26 at the time, and three of them hated me because I wrote poems. And uh, uh, I, I knew who they were. Well, uh, n you know, nobody hating you out of 62,000 is better than three people hating you out of 26. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm a full professor now and, and director of creative writing, and uh, those three people aren't in the department anymore. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, that appeals to your old corporate hearts here in, <laughs> in Pittsburgh. I <laughs> well, I, that, I'm not as <laughs> I'm not as shrewd as that as that sounds. I, I mean, it just happened that way. Uh, but uh, anyway, what I was really involved in and didn't realize it is a split in English departments between creative writers and uh, academics. You know, people who teach literature, and I'd not been aware of this, and I think it's kind of a silly business. Uh, but it does go on, and believe it or not, despite what I've told you, it is not the rule at, at Montana. Montana has a long history of writing programs, and Walter Van Tilburg Clark at one time occupied the job I now, I now have. And, uh, uh, but uh, in some schools it's pretty bad, and I, I won't name, I mean, I know what the schools are, but I, I don't want to talk about them. Anyway, it seems to me, I've thought a lot about it, I've even written a bit about it, and it seems to me it's a xenophobia that's really not worthy of any of us, Christ's sake. We're, we all should be interested in the life of the mind, and it seems to me that, that we ought to have lots to offer each other. And uh, I'm impressed with myself that I work with these educated people who've read all these books and understood them, and... Uh, and as I mentioned in one poem, I consider J. Hillis Miller, who's chairman at Yale and a terrific critic, a good friend of mine. And he's an academic, and I think he's a great man. So I just hope that we can stop being so damn childish and start to appreciate each other more. Anyway, in line with this, I've written a poem that is written for everybody that's involved in, in reading poetry, criticizing poetry, teaching poetry, teaching the writing of poetry, writing poems, all of us, you know. Anybody's interested, uh, and it's called The Art of Poetry. Uh, so I'll, I'll do that one for you. The, the man in the moon was better, not a man. Think, sad Raymond, how you glare across the sea, hating the invisible Near East and your wife's hysteria. Always be here, rain or gloom, painting a private Syria, preferred dimensions of girls. Outside, Gull scar across your fantasy. The rifle spray on glass unfocuses the goats. You stalk on the horizon, laddering blue like dolphins, looping over the sun. Better the moon you need. Better not a man. Sad Raymond, twice a day, the tide comes in. Envy your homemade heroes when the tide is low, laughing their spades at clams, drinking a breezy beer, in breeze from Asia Minor, in those far, far principalities they've been, their tall wives elegant in audience with kings, and envy that despairing man you found one morning sobbing on a log, babbling about a stuffed heart in Wyoming. Don't think, Raymond, they'd respond to what's inside you every minute, crawling slow as tide. Better not tell them, better the man you seem, the sad Raymond, twice a night. The tide comes in. Think once how good you dreamed, the way you hummed a melody from Norway when that summer storm came battering the alders, turning the silver underside of leaves toward the moon. And think, sad Raymond, of the wrong way maturation came, wanting only those women you despised, imitating the voice of every man you envied, 
the slow walk home alone, pause at door, the screaming kitchen, and every day this window, loathing the real horizon, that's what you are, better the man you are, sad Raymond, twice a day, the tide comes in. All's in a name. What if you were Fred? Then none of this need happen. What sad Raymond if, in your will, you leave your tongue and tear ducts to a transplant hospital? There's your motive for trailing goats to Barneo, goats that suddenly are real, outdistancing the quick shark in the quarter mile and singing home sweet home. Motive, but no blood. Sad, sad, the salty fusillade obscures once more your raging play field. Better behind the glass, better the man you were. Sad Raymond, twice a night, the tide comes in. Sad Raymond, twice a lifetime, the tyrant moon loses control. Tides are run by starfish, and those charts you study mornings on your wall are meaningless as tide. The Near East isn't near or east. And Fred was an infant in your neighborhood, devoured by a dog. Those days you walked the beach, looking for that man who's pure in his despair. He's never there. A real man walks the moon, and you can't see him. The moon is cavalier. Better to search your sadness for the man. Sad Raymond, twice a moment, tides come in. Um, Could I, uh, listen, I don't want to, thank you. Thank you very much.